My mother had one hard and fast rule, and that was that you had to be at the dinner table. Now at dinner, we'd talk about everything under the sun. We'd talk about science, we'd talk about global politics, we'd talk about what was happening at school, in the classroom, what was happening at home between my brothers and sisters and I. And my dad had this remarkable and unique habit, and that was that whenever we were talking about some idea, especially the, you know, the really difficult ones, he would build the idea, but he would build it using everything on the table. Salt, pepper, shakers, plates, the food itself. Let me give you an example. We'd say, Dad, you know, what was the Vietnam War all about? And he'd say, well, and he'd crumple up a piece of bread and put it on the end of a fork and then put a piece of chicken on the other end of the fork like a, like a little barbell. He'd say, this piece of bread is like the United States and this piece of chicken is like Vietnam. And the fork is like the relationship of conflict between these two countries. And if we break down this fork into these three cherry tomatoes and these eight pieces of rice, we see there are three major and eight minor conflict points. This is how it went every night at dinner. Um, it had a profound effect on me and my brothers and sisters. And uh, uh, the first thing it did was it made it virtually impossible to eat at my friends' houses. Uh, it wasn't until I was 12 or 13 that I realized that not every family played with their food quite in the same way as, as mine did. But more seriously, it had, it had three real big impacts on me. One is, it gave me an eye for ideas. Ideas were not things that were stuck in my head. They weren't abstract. They were out on the table where you could see them. You could visualize them. And of course, research shows that visualizing ideas is really important. Also, it gave me a feel for ideas because they were out on the table and you could not only see them, but you could touch them. And the research today shows that being able to touch ideas, to turn those abstractions into concrete things, is absolutely essential to human learning. So it gave me a feel for ideas and an eye for ideas, but it also gave me a love of ideas, because you could play with them almost like you'd play with clay, um, because there wasn't really any wrong way to play with the ideas. The, they became you know, really easy to understand, and you developed a, a real love of ideas, a real passion for ideas. And that love of ideas translated into a, a long research career studying exactly how we have ideas, how we get an idea from one place to another, how, how we get an idea from one generation to the other. In fact, when I was a kid, when other kids were building skyscrapers or pterodactyls, I was really thinking about how is an idea built? How do you construct an idea? How do you have an idea? How do you get an idea from one person to another or from one generation to another? And it turns out that thinking about in that way is really part and parcel of what education is all about. Um, education is about having ideas, building those ideas, increasing the sophistication of those ideas, having a deep understanding of what we know about the universe. Although my parents were a little worried that this would never lead to a job, it eventually did. Um, after many years of research, we, I eventually ended up teaching at, at an Ivy League university.